Say you have a waveform with a very bad THD and can't find the cause. You are sampling with a fairly slow sample rate and can't see the detail you'd like to see. What can you do? Take a single cycle sine wave, number all the sample points. Now we compare that wave to one that was sampled three times slower, so it has three cycles, not one. Now number all the samples in both waves, and we can now discuss reordering the three cycle wave into a one cycle wave. The reordering function applied to the first sample, sample zero, is easy. Zero times three is zero. Don't worry about the modulo or percent operator right now. That won't apply for a while. Sample zero stays where it is. It never moves in the reorder function. For sample one, one times three is three. Again, the modulo operator has no influence. So sample number one of the three cycle wave becomes sample number three of the one cycle wave. For sample two, two times three is six. So sample two of the three cycle wave moves to sample number six of the one cycle wave. We can easily do this with a pair of arrays in C, C++, or Java. We are simply recalculating the index of the array. Sample three of the three cycle wave now becomes sample nine of the one cycle wave. Notice that it could have gone to sample seven, which is the same value, but that's not where it belongs. Sample three belongs at sample number nine. Just like sample four, looks like it belongs at sample four, but that's not where it belongs. Four times three equals 12. That's where sample four belongs. Sample five really belongs in sample 15's place. Five times three is 15. Six times three is 18. So sample six gets moved to sample 18. Again, the modulo operator has no impact until we get to an answer bigger than 32. Seven times three is 21. So we move sample seven into the array at element 21 of the output array. Eight times three is 24. Notice that this is the negative peak and clearly that is where sample eight really belongs. Sample nine becomes sample 27 since nine times three is 27. Sample 10 becomes sample 30. We are nearly at the end of our output array for a single cycle wave. But don't forget about the modulo operator. That will save us in just a bit. 11 times 3 is 33, and that is larger than our output array of 32 samples. But the modulo operator gives us the remainder of a division. So 33 modulo 32 is 1, and that is where sample 11 belongs, at sample number 1 back at the beginning of the single cycle wave. 12 times 3 is 36, but 36 modulo 32 is 4, so sample 12 goes back to sample 4. 13 times 3 is 39, and 39 modulo 32 is 7, so sample 13 goes back to sample 7 in the one cycle waveform. This is how the gaps that we left behind in the first pass get filled in. 14 times 3 is 42, and 42 modulo 32 is 10, so sample 14 belongs in sample 10. We aren't going to do the whole wave, but let's fast forward to sample 24, which is the positive peak. 24 times 3 is 72, and 72 modulo 32 is 8. So in this way, the positive peak from the three cycle wave gets relocated to sample 8, where it belongs in the single cycle wave. Can we do this with a five cycle wave? Oh yeah, just multiply by five rather than three. Everything remains the same. How's about a seven cycle wave? No problem, multiply by seven. Nine, absolutely. 11, sure, same formula, just multiply by 11. 13, no problem. 15 cycles is right below Nyquist, but still it works fine. What about 17, which is over Nyquist? Works fine, just like every other number. 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, which looks suspiciously like three cycles, but backwards. And even 31 cycles, which is sampled just slightly above the test frequency. So what was the cause of our horrible THD when we started this video? After reordering, the cause is clear. A very bad differential linearity error. But you could have never seen that with 101 cycles of the waveform. But by reordering the wave, we can clearly see the error.